All right, in this particular lesson, what we're going to be looking at is simplifying rational expressions. In the previous lesson, we looked at simplifying factored rational expressions. In this particular case, they won't be factored, so that's probably going to be the most vital step uh, that we learn in this lesson. So to simplify these types of rational expressions, uh, what we first of all need to do is factor the numerator and denominator completely, so as much as possible. Uh, secondly, much like we did with the factored form, is before you start simplifying, you must state your non-permissible values. So you don't want to divide by your common factors until you've done that. And finally, your last step is to divide the numerator and denominator by any common factors. Uh, so the main step here that we're going to be looking at or focusing on is factoring uh, and then dividing by common factors. Uh, if you forget how to factor, because I'm going to go quite quickly over these factoring problems, uh, you may want to look at my Chapter 4, uh, 4.2 Part 1 Lessons. There's five lessons there to remind us of the different types of factoring and how to factor them. Um, so that's where you could go, is to this Chapter 4, 4.2, Part 1 Lessons for the different types of factoring. All right, so we're going to start simplifying these. Uh, first of all, uh, in our first expression here, in order to simplify, you'll see that the numerator can actually be simplified. Uh, that numerator can be simplified to uh, x plus 4 and x plus 6, because those are the two values that multiply to 24 and add to 10 uh, in this ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is equal to 1 type factoring problem. Uh, in this particular case, our NPV, uh, I will always do NPVs uh, in this lesson in red. Uh, our NPV, actually, no, I won't. I uh, will do it at different times in different colors. Uh, our NPV here is that x cannot equal negative 6. So that's our NPV. Our simplest form is we have common factors of x plus 6, so our simplest form is x plus 4. Okay. Uh, in our next example, you'll see that the numerator can be factored as far as a greatest common factor goes, so that would be I can factor out a 5, and I'll be left with y minus 4. And our denominator, uh, which is a slightly more complicated one, can be done by decomposition or a variety of other methods, uh, our denominator can be factored to, <clears throat> I believe it is, 2y plus 5 and y minus 4. Uh, but there's a variety of ways of doing that. So let me uh, just remind us of maybe one of them. Uh, one way to factor 2y squared minus 3y minus 20 is if you use decomposition. Uh, for decomposition, what we want to do is decompose that middle term into two numbers that multiply uh, to negative 40, because that's 2 times negative 20, and add to the middle term negative 3. And the two values that do that are negative 8 and positive 5. So this middle term has to be uh, decomposed to minus 8y and plus 5y. And then what we can do is factor each binomial here. And our first binomial can be factored to uh, 2y, our greatest common factor, and then y minus 4. And our second binomial can be factored, we can factor out a 5 and be left with y minus 4. So our factors in this case are y minus 4, which is what I have up here, and our other factor is 2y plus 5, which is what I have up here. Okay, so that is factoring by decomposition. I'm going to erase that right now, so if you want to pause the video, uh, you could look at decomposition really quickly or look back on my chapter 4 lessons. Uh, another way to, to factor this is basically the guess and check model, uh, which is another good model. Uh, <clears throat> one way to kind of guess and check is with this uh, 2y squared minus 3y minus 20, uh, we will notice that in order to make the 2, we have to have just a 1 and a 2. Okay, that's, it's a prime number. As far as our negative 20 goes, there's a number of factor pairs. So we could, we could just uh, guess and check. So if we guessed uh, maybe positive 5 and negative 4, that will give us negative 20. But when we do the cross products, uh, what we'll get is 1 times negative 4 is negative 4 and 2 times 5 is positive 10, and that does not give us a middle term. That gives us plus 6, and that does not give us negative 3y. So if we wanted to guess again, uh, what you may want to do, and I'll show you the correct answer in this particular case, uh, and you'll get better at this as you go. If we put in maybe negative 4 and positive 5 here and do a cross product, what we'll get is 1 times 5 is 5, 
and 2 times negative 4 is negative 8, and those do, in fact, make negative 3. Uh, so our factors in this particular case are made up of this, which is 1y minus 4, or in other words, y minus 4. That's one of our factors. And our other factor would be 2y plus 5, and we can see that that is a factor up here. Uh, other models are guess and check, a variety of other ones that you could look at, the box method, um, but you should know how to factor that type of problem. So there's our factors. As far as our non-permissible values go, there are two of them. Our non-permissible values here would be y cannot equal negative 5 halves for that first factor, and for our second factor, y cannot equal 4. Okay. As far as our simplest form goes, we can divide out the common factors of y minus 4. So our simplest form of this particular rational expression is 5 over 2y plus 5. Okay. Uh, in our next example, you'll see that the numerator and denominator have greatest common factors. Our numerator has a greatest common factor of 2, so we're left with x plus 5 in our numerator. And our denominator has a greatest common factor of 4x, so if we factor out 4x, we'll be left with x plus 5. So in this particular case, we have, again, uh, two non-permissible values. We have a non-permissible value of just 0 because 4x is equal to 0 when x is equal to 0. So x cannot equal 0 is a non-permissible value. And our other non-permissible value is x cannot equal negative 5. Okay, so in our simplest form, when we divide by our common factor of x plus 5, our simplest form here will be uh, 2 over 4x. However, that is not our simplest form because you may notice that uh, those values 2 and 4 each share a common factor of 2. If you'd like to rewrite 4x as its prime factorization, uh, this looks like that. It's 2 over 2 times 2 times x, and those common 2s can be factored out, and we can leave a 1 in the numerator. So our simplest form is 1 over 2x, or 1 half, uh, not 1 half x, just 1 over 2x. Our next example, our numerator cannot be simplified any further, but our denominator can. Our denominator is a difference of squares. Again, you can look at uh, factoring lessons on previous uh, videos. But our, our numerator, or our denominator, should be factored to m minus 3 and m plus 3. Uh, our non-permissible values in this particular case are positive 3 and negative 3. Uh, so m cannot equal 3 as one of our non-permissible values, and m cannot equal negative 3 as our other non-permissible value. As far as simplifying this goes, you may notice that the binomials here, binomial factors, none of them are the same. 3 minus m in your numerator is not the same as m minus 3. Uh, because the signs are on the wrong on the wrong particular term. Uh, and 3 minus m is not common with m minus 3, so you may be thinking that this is already in simplest form. However, what you may notice is that the signs, if the signs are exactly opposite, so on these particular terms, on uh, 3 minus m and m minus 3, the signs are exact opposite. So instead of positive 3, I have negative 3 in my denominator. Instead of negative n, I have positive m in my denominator. So if those are exact opposites, one way you can make them the same is to factor out negative 1 out of one of the terms. Or in other words, if I factor negative 1 out of my numerator, what I'm left with is negative 3 plus m. Okay, I'm just switching the signs by factoring out negative 1. Uh, so in this particular case, uh, what you will notice now is that these two factors, negative uh, 3 plus m and m minus 3, are identical because this is the same as m minus 3. So those factors now, they're opposites before, and now they're the same. So one way, if you have opposite factors, is to factor out negative 1. So our simplest form is negative 1 over m plus 3. So that's a technique when you have opposites. Uh, in our last example, finally, we have, again, to factor this, uh, our numerator is a difference of squares. It's going to be 5x plus 2y and 5x minus 2y. And our denominator in this particular case, there is a greatest common factor of 3. So if I factor out 3, I'm left with 2y minus 5x. Sorry. Uh, in this particular case, our non-permissible value is a little bit interesting because our factor actually has, our binomial factor here of 2y minus 5x, actually has two variables. So um, the non-permissible values for y and x are actually dependent on each other. So for example, if I had a value of um, y being 5, then x cannot be 2. 
okay? Because 2 times 5 is 10, and 5 times 2 is 10, and 10 minus 10 is 0. So they're interdependent because there's two variables in the same factor. Uh, so as far as our non-permissible values go, it, it is that this factor, 2y minus 5x, cannot equal 0. Uh, so in order to state the relationship between the two, what you want to do is isolate one of the variables. It doesn't matter which one. Uh, but the relationship that has to be or is not permitted is, so if I solve for this, 2y cannot be equal to 5x, or in other words, if I divide by 2, uh, a non-permissible set of values is that y can never be equivalent to 5 halves of what x is, because if it is, then our denominator will equal 0. So that's our non-permissible value. Uh, finally, in solving this, what we'll notice is that uh, two of these factors are exact opposites from each other. Uh, these two factors here, uh, 5x minus 2y and 2y minus 5x are exact opposites. 5x is positive in one and negative in the other, and 2y is negative in one and positive in the other. So as we saw in the previous example, uh, if you factor negative 1 out of one of those factors, uh, you'll have them be in the same factor. So let me do that. So in our numerator, I'm going to factor negative 1 out of that last factor. And what we'll, uh, that will do is change the sign. So I have negative 5x plus 2y. And our denominator now uh, is 3 times 2y minus 5x. Uh, so our common factors can be divided out. 2y minus 5x is light with negative 5x plus 2y. And what's remaining in our numerator is negative 1 times 5x plus 2y. And our denominator, all that's left there is the number 3. And that is our simplest form.